Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and this is part one of how to make my Lumigurumi Shark. So this one I've done in the light gray, and I did base this off of this shark named Bruce from the movie Finding Nemo. So it's about nine inches in length, so it's pretty long. And here's the front view. You can see that I have the teeth here. And I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, I also did one in the blue color, which is more of the color of Bruce in the movie. So I used neon blue from Rainbow Loom for the main color of this body. And you can just see the difference in the two. So I think no matter what color you choose, it turns out really nice. And I had so much fun designing this. And I hope that everyone has just as much fun making it. To make your shark, you're going to need a hook of some sort, so I have the Rainbow Loom Metal Hook, but you can use a crochet hook or whatever you have on hand. You'll need something to stuff it with, so I'm using polyfill. Now in the tutorial you'll see me use a twist tie to help me get my magic ring started, or if you happen to have the Loomy Looms from Rainbow Loom, you can use the one that has six fins and the one that has four. So both of those tools are optional, but I do find them very helpful just to get those magic rings started. You're going to need some clips and possibly some stitch markers. I find those very helpful too. And then as far as your band counts go, and this is for the entire shark for all three parts of the tutorials, I used 1058 gray, and these bands were made by bracelet loops and then the rest of my bands were Rainbow Loom and that was 269 white, 21 pink, and then 24 of the metallic silver. I'm going to start by showing you how to make the fins and the first five rows of all three of the fins are the exact same. So I'm only going to film this once and it's up to you whether you want to make three pieces during every single step, every row, or you want to wait and do the first five rows and then go back and start over and complete piece number two and three. So they all begin with a magic ring of four. So I have five rubber bands. I have my twist tie. And if you were using the Loomy Loom, you would want to use the one that has four fins. So I'm going to be using the twist tie. I'm just going to put it right next to my hook. And I'm going to triple my first band. So it just goes on, twist, back on, twist, and back on one more time to just make sure it gets over the twist tie and the hook. Pull this up and bend it in half. And that's just going to hold those three loops together and give you something to grab onto. So then I have four bands left. Just going to pull through back on one through the other from the front through those three loops I'm going to pull through my second band back on I have three loops one through the other two I have my third and back through one more time for number four now I can just take out my twist tie put my clip on the band that's on my hook and you can see they're kind of to one side so you just want to try and stretch those evenly around that circle as best as you can. In row two you'll need six bands and we're doing an increase in every other stitch so it's a two one two one pattern. So we're going under our first stitch and it's this little sideways V that's on the outside edge of your magic ring you're going to push through under both loops from front to back and we are starting with an increase so that just means two bands in the same stitch so I'm going to just push through that same stitch a second time the next one is a single and then the next one gets an increase so here's one and back through the same one again and then the very last one is where the clip is and that gets a single so we had started with a stitch count of four 
and since we did two increases, it should now be six. So if you were to count your stitches, it's one, two, three, four, five, and then the last one in whatever row you're working on is always going to be on your hook, and that's number six. In row three, you're going to do an increase and then five singles. So we're starting in the first stitch with an increase. And you'll see this is the pattern we're going to start to use. It's going to be an increase and then the rest singles. So for this row it's five. And that will get you back to the start. Here's number five. In row four, it's an increase and six singles. So you're doing your increase. And you should start to notice that where you're doing that increase, it should naturally want to fold there. And then we have our six singles. And here's number six. In row five, we have an increase and then seven singles. And this is the last row that's going to be the same for all three fins. So here's our increase. now seven. Here's my last one. So what you want to do is make three of these. So I will add the time to go back to if you want to follow along with the steps again. And then in the next sections, I'll show you how to complete all three. In row six of the back fin, we're doing two increases. So I'm starting with an increase. should line up with all your previous increases. And then we're going to do three singles. So that's one, two, three. Now I'm going to do another increase on the opposite side here because I wanted to start to flare out a little bit on either end. And then that leaves four singles. In row seven of the back fin, we're doing two increases again. And the first one is actually an increase with three bands. So as I said, we're doing three into the same stitch. So here's two and three. And then we're going to do four singles. So one, two, three, and four, and then we have another increase. This time it's just with two bands, our regular increase. And then that should leave you with five stitches. 
So this is actually our last row of the back fin. And then after this, I'll show you how to complete your other two side fins. Rows 6 through 8 of the side fins are going to be identical. So in row 6, we're doing an increase followed by 8 singles. So an increase to start. And again, your increases should always be lining up. So we're really just following the same pattern. It's just increasing by one band every row since we're doing that one increase every time. I think my clip must have fallen off because I'm not seeing it here. Let me just grab another one here. Row 7 is an increase and then 9 singles. So here's my increase. And now the 9 singles. one row eight is an increase followed by ten singles so here's my increase to start and then the ten singles So this is actually our last row for the right fin, and then we'll have an additional about half of a row when we do the left. Just so we can get the slant to work out. In the ninth row, just for the left fin only, we're going to do an increase and then five singles. So just like always, we're starting with an increase. And then, as I said earlier, we're only going to go like halfway around. So we're going to just do a total of five. And that's just going to build up this one side so when it lays against the body, it's going to angle the correct way. So here's my fifth one. And I'm just going to take my clip and move it to the band that's on my hook. The main body section is going to start with a magic ring of six. And so for that I have four of the gray and three of the white. So I'm going to use my twist tie once again. And I'm going to triple a gray band. So just twist and put it back on two times. Pull this up, bend it in half. And then I'm going to start by doing the gray. So I have three of those. And then I'm going to switch to the white. 
and I have three of those. So I am going to do a slip stitch and that's just pulling through everything on my hook. Get the other end back on so now you have just the two whites and then one goes through the other. And then that leaves me with two whites. And I'll just put the clip on the band on my hook, remove my twist tie, and then just do the best I can here to get these spread evenly around that circle. In row two, we're going to be doing four increases. So we're going into our first gray stitch here, and we are doing an increase in the gray. So I am going to have to do a slip stitch since I have the white on my hook. So again, just pull through everything on your hook. You have your two gray, one through the other. And then since we're doing an increase, we're going back under that very same stitch and pulling through a second band. In the second stitch we have a single. And then in the third stitch we're doing an increase. Now anytime you do a slip stitch it changes the look of the stitches and we're doing a lot of color changing so you can see here how this may look like a stitch this little part that's going more vertical than it is horizontal that's actually not a true stitch it's this next part over that's more horizontal that's the true stitch so you're skipping this first going into the next now we're doing an increase in the white so again I have to do a slip stitch since I'm changing color and then back through that same stitch a second time for the increase next white stitch again I'm doing an increase so there's one two and then where the clip is is the last stitch and it's going to be gray so again slip stitch and move your clip so I will point out the slip stitches just to warn you at first, but eventually I'm going to stop doing that. In row three, we're doing just one increase in the white. So I'm starting with five of the gray. Again, we did a slip stitch in the previous row, so ignore this first little part. It's this next one over. So there's one. two, three, four, and then number five is a gray band under a gray stitch. And now we're switching to the white. Again, ignore the first little part for the slip stitch. We are going to have to do a slip stitch. In the second stitch, we have an increase. And then in the next stitch, we have a single white. And then we're switching back to gray. So it's a white stitch with a gray band. Do your slip stitch. And again, next stitch, ignore the first little part. Go under where your clip is. And that's a regular single. In row four, we're doing four increases. So we're starting with an increase in the first gray. And then we have one single. Then we're doing a second increase. And then two singles. 
Now we have a gray band gun going under the gray stitch. And I do feel like this is a little bit more of a gap here. Every once in a while from doing the slip stitches, you may notice that it seems like your band has a little bit more of a gap. So what I'm going to do is go under the stitch, but then I'm going to also grab another gray loop and just go under that just to make sure that it's not going to be any gap or hole there. And then we again are ignoring this first white part going under the actual stitch. We're switching to white, so we're doing a slip stitch. And then we're going back through the same stitch because this is an increase. Next one is a single white and then a white increase. And then that's going to leave us with three gray singles. So the first one is actually going under a white stitch. Do your slip stitch. Next one, ignore the first little part. There's my second. And then finally, my third. We have three increases in row five, and we are starting with seven gray. I just have them in a pile. So we have our seven to start. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and it is lining up with the last gray here. It's number seven. And then again, ignore the first little part. We have our white. There's a single to start, so slip stitch. And then we have an increase. And then a second increase. And then a single. And now we have a white stitch. We're switching to gray. Do your slip stitch. And then again, ignore the first little part of the gray. We have a single, and then another single, and then finally where your clip is, you're going to do an increase. Let me just take that out. In row six, we have three increases. And we are doing six singles at the end. I just have those in a pile. So I have three gray singles to start. So there's one, two, three, and then I'm doing an increase. So we had done an increase on the previous row and it just so happens they kind of fall in between but you can see we're doing increases and then spacing out to get that wider head shape and then we have three singles in the gray so two and the last one is going to line up under a gray and now again ignore the first little part here we have a single white, do your slip stitch, and then we have an increase, next one's a single, next one's another increase, so we're just gradually widening this out.
and then a white single. Now under the white stitch, switching to gray, do your slip stitch, ignore the first little part, and we're doing six gray as I said, so this is the second, and it's going to take us all the way back to the start. In row 7, we're going to start to add some pink for the mouth, and these are going to be just in the inner loops. So I have 7 gray singles to start. Again, I just have them in a pile here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, and seven. And now I have a gray stitch. Again, I think this looks like it's a little bit more of a gap here. And again, yours may differ. Wherever you feel like there may be a gap, you can always just pick up an extra band. So I'm just going to grab an extra gray loop there. And I am pulling through everything since I'm changing color to the white. And then again, I'm not going to keep reminding you, I'll stop reminding you, but you can tell here we did a previous slip stitch. So now we are going to start with the pink, and already you can see I went under two and I shouldn't have. I'm going under just the inner loop, so the one closest to you. We're doing a slip stitch once again. And we have a total of six of the pink, so every time just the inner loop. Because we want to leave that outer loop empty to add the teeth. So that's three, four, five, and here's number six. Now I have one white stitch left. I'm going to push under both loops. I'm doing a white, so a slip stitch. And now I have three gray singles. So a slip stitch with the first. Two. And three. And then I have an increase, and then two singles. Next I'll do the upper teeth, and there's going to be seven, so I have seven white bands. And then I have a stitch marker, or you could just use a clip, that I'm going to use to hold the loose band until I can secure it in place. So that empty stitch that we left by just going in the inner loop, we're now going to go in this outer loop. So what we're going to do is go from the bottom up, and I'm going to find the first one here over to the right. I'm going to push up through. Again, you're going from the inside out, take my first band, pull through, get it back on, and then pull one through the other. Now I'm not going to make this really tight, I want to leave it on the loose side. And I'm just going to go along, push up, I'm going to do that for all seven here. So I'm just going one right after the other in that outer loop. So it's going to look a little funny at first because they're just going to be sticking out. I really had a heck of a time trying to figure out how I was going to make the mouth. 
and make the teeth. And the last one here, it looks pretty tiny, but I'm going to go up through that. And you can see this one already started to come apart. Just make sure that they are staying one loop through the other. And then what I'm going to do is go down to this pink row. Now, this first pink is not actually a true stitch. It's a slip stitch. But I am going to use this just because I need the room. So I'm going to push up through that. Just have to remember when we form our next row that this is not a true stitch. So I'm going to pull the white down through. Leave that on my hook. Go to the next one. Push up through the stitch. Grab the white. Pull that down through the stitch. And then one through the other. So you're just left with one loop on your hook. Again, push up through the pink, bring the white down, one through the other. Just going to work our way along here. Again, just make sure on the upper side that it is staying the one loop through the other. And then here's our last pink. Pull that down through and one through the other. So here's where I'm going to use my stitch marker or you can use a clip because when I loop this next row I'm just going to work this loose band into it. So here's what it looks like and you can do some adjusting as far as where this other end of the loop lies. If you want to push it more up or pull it more down. But that's our upper row of teeth. In row 8 we have 3 increases, we're doing some more of the mouth, and it's ending with 7 gray. So I have 2 singles, and then I have an increase. So again we're just slightly widening out the head. I have three singles, so there's one, two, three, and now a gray stitch, I'm switching to the white, so slip stitch. I have a second white, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but we had done just a single white in the previous row with a slip stitch. So ignore this first little part, go into the next white. And then if you recall, this first pink actually is a slip stitch um, that I had gone under for the tooth, but we are ignoring that. So it's this next pink. It is going to be a little full because we already have that white tooth band going down through. But you're going to push under that. We're doing a pink, so it's a slip stitch. Under the next pink, we're doing an increase. So I have two pinks. Next one gets a single. Just make sure you're making it up through both of those loops. And then an increase. And then a single. So you are going to have one pink stitch left. And don't forget we have this loose band that we want to work in. So what I'm going to do now is grab this loose band on my hook and I'm going to go up through the pink. I have a white band. It's going to pull through everything on my hook. Back on and one through the other. Now again we had just one single white stitch in the previous row. So ignore the first. Go into the second. It's going to be another white. And then that's going to leave us with our seven of the gray. So 
So there's one. And then back to the start. So hopefully everybody got through that part okay. Don't think it's too difficult. But it's definitely a little bit of a different thing than what we've been doing. In row 9 we're doing just one increase and it's our last row with pink. So I'm starting with 7 gray singles. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, and the last one goes under a gray stitch and now we have a white stitch with a white band so I'm doing a slip stitch and now we're going to do a total of eight pink so the first one is going under a white stitch do the slip stitch and then we have seven more here so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight, so it's a pink band under the pink stitch and now I'm going under the white stitch with a white band slip stitch and then I'm going under a white stitch, I'm switching to the gray so yet another slip stitch and then we have three more gray singles so one, two, three, and now we have an increase. And then that leaves three more gray singles. In row 10 we have 5 increases and we're ending on 9 gray. So we have a single and then an increase and then we're going to do 4 singles in the gray so that's 1 two, three, four. Now we have a gray stitch but we are switching to the white. So we have two white singles, that's one. Next one goes under a white stitch. And now we're going to be under a pink stitch. We're going to do two increases in a row. So that's the first. And second. And then we have three white singles. There's two. three and then we're going to do two more increases so that's the first
and the second. Let me just slide these up. We have a pink stitch with a white band. We're going to do two singles, so that's the first. Now we have this lone white stitch here. It gets another white single. And then that's going to leave us with nine of the gray. So it's going to be a gray stitch to start. Slip stitch. And then just complete the row. So you should definitely feel like it's starting to look like the beginning of a shark here. Last one. Next I'm going to form the bottom teeth, so I have eight white bands and my stitch marker. So this time you want to have the opening facing away from you, and we are just going to again go in the outer loop. Now we're only going to do eight teeth, and there's actually more stitches than that, but if you try to put too many in it gets too overcrowded. So I'm going to start over here towards my right, I think I'm going to go into this second white stitch over here. Again, outer loop. And I'm going to pull through and pull one through the other. So again, don't pull this really tight, but you do need to make it just a little bit snug so it doesn't come apart on you while you're doing the rest here. I'm going to skip the next one, go into this next one. And then I think I'll skip the next, just because those were increases. So the stitches are going to be a little bit tighter together. And then I'll do one in each of these across the center. I mean, it's totally up to you. Use your judgment as to where it looks the best. So this is my sixth one here. So I think I'll skip the next one. And here's number seven. And then again, I think I'll skip the next one. Go into this last one. And that's number eight. So now what I need to do is to get the teeth to come down through. So I'm going to now flip it towards me. And they're going to go up this time. For the upper row they came down. But for this row they're going to go up. So let me just push through. And grab the first one. Pull it down through. I know it's kind of hard to see here. Um, from the inside here, you're going through pink, push it through, grab it, pull it down through, one through the other. You'll need to keep looking here, take the next one over, push it through, get the loop, again, Keep checking how it's looking here. Also make sure that they're still staying one through the other. I can see this one already came apart. Let me just fix that. Make sure this one's together. And then there's one more. And I'm going to add my stitch marker again because when I do the next row, I'll just pick up that loose band. And again, you can play around with the teeth. 
with this part that looped over. You can move that back or forth. But basically now we have this mouth part done. In row 11 we don't have any increases, but we do have a section of 10 white bands that are just going to go in the inner loops. So I'm starting with 6 singles in the gray. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six. Now I have a gray stitch, but I'm switching to the white. So slip stitch. And then I have two more white singles. There's one, two. And now I'm going to start my 10 inner loop for the white. So the one that's closest to the inside here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Now I have two white singles and I do have this inside loop here from making the teeth. So what I'm going to do is grab that first and then I'm going to go through this stitch. Now this time it's going to go through both loops straight through. So I'm going to pull through the stitch, that loose band, get the other one back on. I have the three loops, one through the other two. And then again, under both loops, I have a white. And then that's going to leave me with ten of the gray. So the first one goes under a white stitch. Do my slip stitch. And then it should be nine more until you get back to the start. So if you wanted to, instead of connecting that loose band from the teeth, you could just make a slip knot and tie that off and then hide the end of the loop inside. I just find it a lot easier to just connect when you can within the next row. That way it's just less messy to me. But it's totally a preference. So last one. In row 12 we have two more increases, so we're going to start with six single gray, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and the last one is going under a gray stitch. And now I'm switching to the white. So slip stitch. We have four of the white singles. So here's two. Three. Four. And then I'm going to do an increase. And then I have four singles in between. So that's one, two, three, four, and then my next increase. And 
and then I'm going to do five of the white singles. So one, two, three, four, and the last one is going under a white stitch. And then that's going to leave ten of the gray. So slip stitch in the first, and then nine more. So this is actually the largest row that we're going to have with our stitch count of 33. I actually had an earlier version that I had made that had a stitch count that was closer to 40, and I had a good portion of it done, but it was just so big that I took half of it apart, which actually broke my heart to do, but, and then I reworked it to just be on the smaller side. Even this is, is big, so here's the last one. In row 13 we have 33 bands and I'm going to just start to lay them in piles. So we have 10, 7, and 16. So we're doing our 10 gray. So 1, 2, 3, 4, Now this one here looks a little bit of a gap to me, so again, let me just grab an extra gray loop here. And then we have number seven, it's going under a white stitch, eight, nine, and 10. So you can see that we've extended a lot farther down into the white this time. And now I have, so I didn't go all the way through there. And now I have seven white. So slip stitch. Two. Three. Four. Six, seven, and then the rest are going to be gray singles. There's going to be sixteen. So slip stitch, and then fifteen left here. So you'll notice that these next several rows are all going to have a stitch count of 33. This next one is going under white. I see a piece of stuffing. Even though I didn't add the stuffing yet, I have it around my desk here, so. So as I was saying, it's a stitch count of 33. And the only thing that's going to change is your whites and grays are going to shift a little bit. Because if you don't shift them, they, they automatically shift one stitch every row. So you have to account for that. And honestly, it's kind of a pain to figure out sometimes. Especially in the rows when you start to do decreases, that was really tough to get it to line up evenly. In row 14 we have 10, 6, and 17. So here's 1, 2, Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth one is going under a gray. And now we have six of the white, so slip stitch, two, three, four, five, six. We have a white stitch. We're switching to gray with a slip stitch. And then we're going to do 17 in total. So you may notice on the sides that it goes in just slightly just from doing those color changes, those slip stitches. But as you continue to build the rows, it'll even out and be completely smooth there. I don't notice it as much with doing this gray one, but I think for some reason when I did the blue one, the bands were a different feel, and it seemed like it had bent in there a little bit more on mine. So I guess it just depends on the type of band you're using as well. So I think before this gets too large, I am going to do the eyes next. To make the right eye, you're going to need six white and four gray bands. And I'm using a six millimeter safety eye for the pupil, and then I have a stitch marker. So I'm going to begin by making a magic ring of four, and you can use a twist tie if you want to, or a loomy loom. I'm just going to use my hook, so I have tripled my first band, and then I have four bands that I'm going to pull through one at a time. So that's one. Two. three, and four. Then what I'm going to do is to flip this upside down. I want all of the bands to be on the lower half of the circle. Usually I'm telling you to spread them out, but this time I want them to be on the lower half. I'm going to flip this so the correct side is facing me. And in this first stitch that my band is coming up through, I'm going to go from the back side push through those two loops and take my white band, pull through, back on, and then one through the other two. So that's just going to make that half circle and this is going to make it extend out even further. Now I need to take my stitch marker, place that on, and then what I'm going to do is use my additional four gray bands to form the upper part of the eyelid. So I'm going to Again, turn this. I want the correct side facing me, but that means I need to go in from back to front. So we're actually starting on what's the right side now. It's the opposite side of where the stitch marker is. This is definitely going to be a little bit unorthodox because you're not actually going in through stitches. So it's a little bit of a guesswork, but I'm going to try and explain how I did it. So the first part here, if you look, it's not actually, this is the stitch here. If you look the where the bands pull through one another, the one loop goes over the other. I'm going to actually just go through this loop from the back, push through just that one single loop, and I'm going to pull through the gray, back on, and one through the other. Now I have my tripled band that is my center of my magic ring. 
from the back side, I'm just going to grab one out of those three loops. And I'm going to pull through. It's very tight here. Back on. And then I'm going to do one through the other two. And now, working my way over to the left here, hopefully you can see it okay. Um, you can see that there's one loop over here, one over here, and there's these two bands that are in the center of it. I'm just going to push through one of those. And again, if you're not going through the exact same one I am, it's not really going to make a very big difference as long as you can get the four stitches in. So that's the third. And then you can see where my stitch marker is here. Right before that, I'm going to go through. You can see the one band that looped over. That's kind of next to where we did our previous stitch. I'm just going to go to the other side of that, push through one loop. I'm only going through one loop every time. And then do a crochet from back to front. And then I'm going to take this loose band and just attach it to my stitch marker. So again, I know that was a little bit odd, but that's the way I came up with to get the nice shape of the eye that I wanted. So now I can just take my pupil, stick that straight through the magic ring, and then when we attach this, where the two loose bands are, they're just going to get pulled through to the inside of the face and they're going to get a slip knot to tie them on. So we're going to have the exact same setup for the left eye. It's just going to have to work in an opposite direction. So I'm going to triple my first band. And I'm going to pull through my first band. One through the other. But now what's going to be different is instead of going in a counterclockwise direction, I actually have to go in a clockwise direction. So I have to go around to the right. So it's going to feel like really awkward. So I sort of have to hold it this way. I'm going to come up underneath, go through those three loops. Already I'm struggling because it feels so strange. through, back on, one through the other two. Again, I'm working over towards the right side. That's three. And four. So our loose band is over here to the right where normally it would be over here to the left. And then I have that one band I'm going to do coming back. So I'm going to push through from front to back this time and do one through the other two. So now I'm going to attach my stitch marker. So this is what's the front of the eye here. And I'm going to flip it around so the wrong side is facing me. And now I'm going to go in this end stitch again. It's just this one loop that has gone over top. I'm going to push through that. It's going to be my first stitch. And then we have this triple band for the center of the magic ring. I'm going to just pick up one of those loops for my second, and now over to the third, and again I'm just going to go under the one loop, and then finally over to the other side here of the one loop, again just one loop. stitch marker out of the way here. And I'll just attach it onto the stitch marker. 
Sorry if you guys are struggling with this part. I know it's definitely awkward and a little bit tricky. And if you do really severely struggle with that, you can always go with a different type of eye. You could do wiggle eyes or you could come up with your own method. And then just get that pupil to go right in the middle of the magic ring. I'll have the two loose bands and I will deal with those when I attach the eye. Now I'm ready to attach the eyes, so I have my two ends that are going on the inside of the safety eyes, and then I just have a couple of extra bands if I feel like I need to tack it on. So as far as the placement goes, it's going to go kind of in line with this pink here for the mouth. I'm just going to follow that up, and right where the gray starts, I'm going to count about five openings. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. So maybe right about here, I'm going to take my left eye and stick that through. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So in line with the middle of the pink here, right where the gray starts, I'll count one, two, three, four, five, maybe like right about here. I'm going to stick that in. And then what you can do is just look at the front of your face and see if you think they look like they're evenly spaced and you can do any kind of adjusting that you want. And then I'm going to take my back and I'll just stick this on, push it on there nice and tight. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. get that securely in place. And now I do have to secure these two loose bands on the end. So first you need to see how you want your eyes. If you want them to be more down, more angled up, or straight, you can sort of turn this. He usually has pr a pretty mad face. So I'm going to have mine sort of even, but maybe slightly downward and then find where the two end bands would lay, so maybe like right about here. I'm going to push up through and I'm just going to grab one. So I have to take this off. I'll just grab the gray loop, pull that down through, and then I'm going to come up the next hole right next to it, grab the white loop, pull that down through, and, oops, you can see I'm through one here. I didn't want to be. But I'm going to just take a gray band and go through both of those loops. And let me get my hook out of here. I don't know how I did that. Take this and pull a nice and tight slip knot there. And so that has secured now the end and also the safety eye has made this nice and tight. Now if you do want to get this any tighter to the head so it doesn't stick out quite as far, you can just take your additional bands, for example, you can push up through, grab a loop, you can either grab one or both, it depends on how tight. I'm just going to grab the back loop, the one that's against the head, pull that down through, and then I'll come up the next hole grab another loop and pull that down through and then on the inside here oops, looks like I got two I would just pull one through the other make it a nice and tight slip knot and then you can work your way around tacking it anywhere you want anywhere you think it needs to be done so you just repeat that process for the other side just get your two loops to go down, tie them off with a slip knot, and then any additional loops that you want tighter, you can do. This is now the end of part one, and so you need to continue on to part two to make the middle section of your shark. So I will add the link to that, and I will see you shortly. I hope that everyone loves the way that your sharks are starting to turn out. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook, 
You can post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page. I always love to see everyone's creations. And you can feel free to like my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that way you can stay up to date when I have new tutorials available. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram. So feel free to post your pictures and comments there too. If you do post on Instagram, don't forget to tag me. And you can subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!